Could the following students please come to the office at lunch for a pickup? Brooke Ryan, Jeevan Sidhu, Abhipal Sandhu, Juana Palicki, Blake Newfeld, and Josiah Lavello, and Sam McCarr. The grade 11 12 drama class is doing final performances on Wednesday night. That's tonight. Doors open at 6 and the show will start at 6.30. Please come and support the students. They need an audience. The event is free. Running time is just over an hour. Any student interested in an immediate Do this math. in Ottawa for Encounters with Canada, come see Mrs. McKenzie February 2nd to 8th. Sport and Fitness and February 9th to 15th. Sustainable Agriculture are open for a discounted price of $650. There is a spring break trip happening in 2021 to Spain. It is open to everyone. Please see or email Ms. Grafune in R103 to get more information. What is your answer? The spots are filling up. Overdue library books. Please check your board books and return or renew ASAP. The cafeteria will be closed for the rest of the semester starting tomorrow. Grad photo sign-up sheets are in the office. Please come only at lunch or before or after school. 72,000. He put in 72,000 over the course of 30 years. What did he end up with? Office for Ben Banger and $447,000, almost $448,000. That, minus that, is what he earned from interest. He had to do nothing to earn it. That is approximately 375000 free dollars. All he had to do was go to the bank, push in his code, and deposit 200 bucks every month. We are so lazy, we can do this with our phones now. Paycheck goes into your account automatically, go into the account, transfer funds, 200 bucks to an investment. Do that every month, on the first of every month, from now until you're 55, and retire a millionaire. That's free money because you are also going to get a pension from Canada. You're going to get a pension from your job. That is spare money. If I had done this, when I retire, they will pay me exactly what I get paid a month right now. I get to wake up in the morning and get paid what I am paid now for not working. But if I was smart like Jim here, I would also have an extra half a million dollars in the bank. Okay? Do not buy three snowmobiles, five ATVs, a vacation home. Do not do it. Do not go to the movies every single week. Stay home for one week. Save that $200 every month of your life and retire with a million dollars. Because you could start now if you have a job, not when you're 25. Retire a millionaire. All right? That's how interest works. What? Yes. My wife's uh, uh, our, our pension plan from one of her jobs. She worked there for like eight years. She's put in, uh, she put in ten five percent of her salary for her eight years. She earned about probably average about forty five thousand. So she put in uh forty five hundred divided by two twenty two fifty for those eight years. She put in sixteen grand. She's well over a hundred thousand dollars. She hasn't worked there in 10 years. She just sits there and it makes more and more and more money. Yes. Not from working. My wife could retire right now, like stop working, and that plan would pay her like $500 a month for the rest of her life. If she stopped now. 
Now, she's not going to stop teaching out. She's only 43. She's going to teach for another 20 years. So that plan, and that's not the plan she has right now as a teacher. That's some, some old job. That is going to keep growing <coughs> over that time. Huh? Aren't I what? I'm 44. Almost 45. I turn 45 on... Hurtful. Oh, that's true. April 27th. What? I will have to teach until my wife retires because I'm an idiot. What I should do is just leave. She can come and catch up to me because I've done the time, but I don't think she'll appreciate that. So I am not going to stay the whole time, though. Right? That's why I'm leaving this country, because I'll be able to survive quite comfortably on my reduced pension. All right. Now, Doofus Jared spent 10 years having fun. He didn't start till he was 35. So he's only making 12 payments, but he's only doing it for 20 years, right? His interest is 10, his present value is 0, his payment is negative 200, payment spear is 12, compounds are 4, and his payment was, I can't remember, do we say beginning or end? Uh, he's saving up, so they give it before he implies, so it's at the beginning. Punch that into your calculator, solve for future value, and look at how much less Jared has because he started 10 years later. I don't need to have my calculator on the screen, do I? If I write it out like that? Thank you. How much does dude have? 151000 Started 10 years later, he ends up $300,000 less in 10 years. Ash, click apps, one. One. Does everybody see? 10 years of difference. Right? Now, what if he wants to catch up? Because that's what D is. He wants to catch up. So it's still going to be 240 because it's 12 times 20. Still going to be 10. His present value is zero. His future value, he wants the 447,918. 12, 4, beginning. So you have to check how much he's got to save if he starts 10 years later. What's he got to pay if he wants to catch up? Five ninety one twenty eight. He's got to pay almost triple to catch up ten years, one third of the time Jim was saving. So he's got to pay triple the money. How much did Jim invest in total? We did that. Jim invested 72000 How much did Jared invest to catch up? He did 591.28 times 12 for one year times 20, right?
he had to invest 141907 He had to invest double the amount, which means he had to work twice as hard. What's the lesson? Start now. All right? Now, there's a lot of commercials on the radio and things that say, even if you're not saving for your retirement, you are saving for your retirement because of Canada Pension Plan. Yes, the government will give you a small pension, hopefully when you people retire. But be aware that there's a crap ton of old people in this country. And a crap ton of old people are going to be collecting that money before you get to it. And what's the one thing that no government wants to do? No. Raise taxes. What's the only way a government makes money to pay you? Taxes. I hope there will be money there for you when you grad or retire, but I do not know. We cannot see the future. That's well, decent. A few, like eight, nine hundred bucks a month. Everybody cool? All right, turn the page over. Well, actually, don't turn the page over because we will be at mortgages. Uh, mortgages are starting on page 244. You see some highlighted words there. Read that paragraph, please. Take a second. While you're reading, remember a mortgage is the biggest thing you, you will ever do in your life. If you choose to buy a house, that is the biggest purchase you will make in your entire life. Even if you choose to rent a home to live in and buy a vacation place, which is something a lot of people do. It's the biggest thing you will ever buy. Even if you're buying a, a trailer in a trailer park, it's still... $50,000. So unless you're driving a very fancy car, it's the most expensive thing you will ever buy. And you can read all that. Fancy words in there, amortized. That's just how long they've divided your mortgage up. Mortgage, amortized. So you're paying it over 10, 20, 30. Actually in Canada, I don't think, you can't get a mortgage for more than 25 years in Canada. Um, you get an interest rate that's good for about five years because the bank can't see the future. When you become a good customer, you can get longer terms. My bank is offering me a 10-year guarantee on interest right now. It's not a bad idea, right? You just have to make a decision on how much risk you're willing to take. A lot of people take one-year mortgages and they get that insurance or that interest rate for one year because they don't know if interest is going to go up or down. Now, the problem with that is what if some economic catastrophe happens and the interest rates go way up? At the end of your year, your payments go way up. Now, for me, I don't like that. I like to know where my money's going because I'm bad with money. I'm really bad with money, even though I teach about it. I'm bad with it because I didn't learn it when I was your age. I was too busy learning the sign law. Everybody just figured that financial math would filter into our heads, kind of like the way we figure regular math filters into your heads and teach you to do 63 instead of actually memorizing anything. It doesn't work. It also doesn't work for us. So I like to know where my money's going. So I pay a slightly higher interest rate in order to lock it in for a period of time. 
So for the next five or 10 years, I know exactly what my mortgage payment is going to be. Some people say, don't do that. Some people say, take the risk. If it goes a little, if it goes even lower, then you're paying too much. But of course, for every coin that has a head side, it's got a tail side. And if interest rates can drop, they can also go through the roof. Some of your grandparents, if they bought a house in Canada, they paid interest rates on their mortgage of 20%. Now interest rates are like three. Your grandparents were buying a house 40 years ago, right? If your grandparents were in Canada, okay? So be aware. Huh? 20% is appalling. It's a crazy interest rate. It boggles my mind. That's like credit card interest rates. I can't imagine paying that on a mortgage. But that's what they did. Okay. Uh, You can read the rest of that. This next thing is important. Most of the time, mortgages are done semi-annually. So the interest is compounded how many times a year? Twice. It has to be annually or semi-annually according to Canadian law. But typically it's done half. And the payments are at the end of the interest period. So they tack the interest on before you make a payment. So you owe them as much money as possible. Okay? Everybody cool? All right, let's do a couple of these. Gino wants to buy $425,000 house. No such thing around here anymore. Not even in Chilliwack. You're not going to find a $425,000 house. You will in hope. Mr. Maxwell said once that you could buy a house for $125,000 when we were in planning. Well, he he's wrong. I know. My buddy's house, or my, parent, my grandparents' house <laughs> in Vancouver, he bought it in the 60s for $24,000. He sold it when he died, because he died, so they had to sell it, for $700,000. Now, it would be worth well over a million. My piece of crap house, I bought for $272,500. Now, I could sell it 10 years later for over four hundred and fifty. dollars It is almost doubled in value. My house is a piece of garbage. I do not take care of it. I do not care, because some idiot will buy it from me at an incredibly high rate, I will put that money in the bank, leave this country, and live like a king on that money because I do not care. All right. So Gino's buying this house. Gino has saved up $25,000. Good man. In Canada, by law, you must save up a down payment. If it is the first home you are ever buying, I believe it is 5%. Once you have bought one home and had one mortgage, you must come up with 15 or 20%, I believe. I cannot remember. That is to stop people who cannot afford a house getting a mortgage, which is what happened in the United States, which is what caused the last economic collapse that almost crippled the American economy. Almost. Fortunately, there was so much money down there, they were able to figure it out. Fortunately. All right. So, dude is, how much is dude really going to borrow? 400000 He's going to pay every month for 15 years. So what goes in for number? How many times a year? 12 times how many years? 15. You can punch that in as an operation. You don't need to write this down if you don't want to. You can go straight to your calculator. Interest rate, 7%. That's an incredibly high mortgage rate. Present value, how much is he borrowing? How much is he borrowing? 400,000. How much is he paying? Do we know? Do we know? No, so that's where our question mark goes. Future value, what are we trying to get to? Zero. How many payments a year? How many compounds a year? Semi-annually. Two. Payment, beginning or end of the interest cycle. 
N because they want to charge you that interest. Tell me what his payment is. What's dude got to pay? Well, it's actually going to be 73, right? Because it's 0.9977. So it's $3,500 if he wants to pay his loan off in 15 years. Will he pay more or less if he stretches that out to 25 years? His payments will be less. Will he pay more or less in total, do you think? More. That's the next choice you have to make. Can you afford higher payments to pay it off sooner? Or do you need lower payments, pay it off later, but you pay a crap ton more money? Your choice when you choose to buy something. And let's do that right now. Instead of 12 times 15, what's it going to be now? 12 times what? 25. Go ahead and do that. Nothing else changes. What does his payment become? 2801.66. Everyone agree? What happens if he can change it to 4%, which is more realistic? 12 times 25, and your interest is going to be 4 now. Two thousand one hundred and four oh eight, right? Now, is that a safe assumption? No, but you know, for our purposes, we're going to do that just to show you what I mean. If he goes at four percent, he is paying twenty one oh four point oh eight times how many months? 12 times how many years? 25. At 7%, it was 2866, wasn't it? Oh, 2801. 2801 times 12 times 25. So do that. Oops. Twenty-eight oh one oh six or oh eight. Twenty-eight oh one sixty-six. So, dude's four hundred thousand dollar home is actually going to cost him eight hundred and forty thousand dollars. Right now, a lot of people will say this is a why. Why would you do that? Well, the argument is you got to have a place to live, right? You're going to be paying somebody something to live somewhere. You're either renting or you're buying a house, right? If you buy the house, your hope is when he sells his house, it's worth a lot more, right? That's the hope. It doesn't necessarily work out, but you got to pay to live somewhere, right? The argument is if you're paying rent, you're just paying somebody else to save up their house and sell it and make lots of money. But a great many places in the world do not own houses. Owning a house is a particularly North American thing. Many, most, I would argue, I'm not 100% sure because I'm not that widely traveled, but in most places, you do not own your home. You rent it from someone. And all those places, people succeed just fine. So, I don't know. 
right? If I decide I hate my house, I can't just walk away from it. If I'm renting my house and somebody else says, hey, you want to rent my house? I'm going away for a year. I'll, you can rent it for me for half of what you're renting now. I can just, okay, yeah, leave. Just depends on what you're thinking about. Uh, how much interest did he pay? Well, at 4%, he borrowed 400000 he paid 631. 7%, he borrowed 400000 he paid 840. How would we find out the amount of interest he paid? I heard someone say subtract. Yes, you would subtract. Total amount paid minus the principal. What's left is interest. Now, please notice, just like investing... The interest was a huge amount, way more than the principal. Same thing in borrowing. Everybody clear? Uh, we're going to leave off 246. You can try those if you want. Um, let's go to the bottom of 246 where we talk about loans. Cast your minds back to yesterday when we did that car payment one and it came out to 36.8 payments, yes? Remember that? And I told you, you're going to make 36 regular payments, then you're going to have to make another payment to finish it off, right? That extra payment is what is called in the finance world a balloon payment. It's when you pay off the last little bit. So let's start here. 5700 to buy a car, bank charge you 10.5%, compounded semi-interestly. Interest, you make 150-month payments at the end of each month for three years. So, payments, 36, yes? Three years. Interest, 10.5. Present value, we borrowed 5700 Our payments are negative 150 because they're going out of our pocket. Future value, zero. We pay 12 times a year, it's compounded twice a year. And our payments are at the end because it's a borrowing situation, right? They want to make sure they ding us for the interest. So, how much of the loan remains at the end of this? So, we enter it into our machine. 36, 10.5, present value 5,700, payment 150. Future value. We don't know the future value, right? This is our question. 12 to an end. And what am I left with? What am I left with? What, Crystal? Well, what's the value? Yes. You got 700? I don't know. I got 1,454.54. Everybody agree? Yeah, yeah, yeah? Okay, so in three years, I still owe that much money. Right? Everybody cool? All right. Now, take this and let's move it down here. We don't know how many more payments we need, yes? But we know it's 10.5. We know our present value is 14.54.54. We know our payments are 150. We know our future value is 0, 12, 2, end. Sort that out. And what do I get for N? 10.16. Everybody understand? Right? So I'm going to make 10 more payments, yes? 
Is everybody cool? So I had to make 46 full payments. Yes? Right? Of how much money? What's that? Six thousand nine hundred. I borrowed five thousand seven hundred. Yes. Right. So the finance charge is what? If I'd walked in and bought the car, how much did I have to give the guy? Five thousand seven hundred dollars. How much did I really pay? A little bit more than six thousand nine hundred. Yes. Because that's only 46 payments. I still got this extra little payment here, don't I? Right? So we're going to call that finance charge is going to be the amount we paid minus 5,700. But we don't know the amount we paid yet, do we? Do we? No. We got to figure that out. And how do we figure that out? What do you think we would do here? How many more payments do we need to make? I'm going to stop for a second, talk with your neighbor, see if you can figure out how much that last payment is. Because, now stop, 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 stop. Is that last payment going to be this 0.16? Or is that last payment going to be 1.16? Does everybody understand what I'm saying? Do you make 10 full payments and then a partial payment? Or do you make nine full payments and a bigger payment to finish it off? Which is better? The second one, right? Because you don't get double interest on it. So how are you going to figure out how big that last payment is? Try it. Monkey around with it a little bit. It's a little weird. See what you can do. So we all decide we want to do the balloon payment, right? So we don't get dinged twice on interest. So how many regular payments of 150 did we make? We made 36, then we had a little bit more, 10.16, right? So we made 45 payments, yes? 45 payments at 10.5. Present value was 5,700. Payments were minus 150. 12, 2, end. Yes? So what's our future value there? One seventy three. Oh, sorry. One seventy three forty. So what's our last payment have to be to pay it off? Now, this is kind of tricky. That's what's left over, yes? Right? So is there going to be interest on that? What do you think? Right? So... Our last payment is this. If we pay it, we're good. Are we good, do you think? Is the bank going to give you a free ride at all? What is the bank's only job? To get money. Are they going to charge you interest on that? Yeah, they are, aren't they? So really, what should we have done there instead of 45?
we should have made this really 46, yes? Right? Because that our 46th payment is going to be the one that pays it off, yes? Or is it going to be our 47th payment? We want it to be our 46, so we don't get double dinged on the insurance, yes? So when I make that 46, this comes out at 170, oh, sorry, this comes out at 2488 left over. So that 47th payment must be, or that 46th payment, 150 plus that, 174.88. Does everybody understand why? We don't want to wait and get double dinged on the insurance. I, interest. Okay? That last payment has to be slightly bigger. So we can get out of it at the end. Is everybody good? Everybody okay? All right. So there's a bit there to practice. And I'll let you do that. And then you can see I've got a whole bunch of practice here. It's not integral. Right? Because what's the point? That you understand that money grows, debts grow. Don't mess around. Um, on page 256 is the next time something comes up. And this is something that will attack you people immediately. Like, if you go off to university or college, the very first day you're going to be walking down the campus and someone is going to walk up to you and offer you a credit card. And you're, they're going to say, it's got low rates, it's got this, that, the other thing. Look, we'll give you a free t-shirt. And you'll sign up. You will. Don't worry about it. Everybody does it. That's not the mistake. The mistake is then using it. All right? And we're going to talk about why in a minute. You can read all that. It's pretty easy. But there's important stuff. This line right here. A credit card is a great thing if you pay it off every month. No interest. If I buy a $500 suit on my credit card on April 3rd and I pay it off on April 15th, it's only the 500 bucks. No interest. If I don't pay it off, you can pay the minimum and wait till later. If you wait till later, you owe the credit card company interest on the amount you did not pay. Everybody with me? Now, credit cards compound that interest. So if I borrow 500 bucks to buy a suit, I pay back 300 of it. They're going to charge me interest on that 200 bucks, right? If I don't, and that 200 bucks is going to, they're going to charge me the interest, add it to that 200 bucks. Now, credit cards are about 20% in a year, right? So let's say 24% so we can do better math because some are that high. 24% a year, so 2% a month, yes? On that 200 bucks. If I don't pay that 200 bucks off, they compound it. So they put 2% on the 200. And then if I don't pay next month, my new stuff, they compound that 200, 2%. Jasmine. What does it mean about that? That means there's a lot of things that go into your credit. Okay. One, how much credit you have. If you have a bunch of credit cards and they're all full, that's bad. Right? If you have credit cards that you do not use, that's bad. Because that's like saying, I'm a world-class snowboarder, but I never go snowboarding. Who would know I was good? You understand what I'm saying? The way to get good credit is to have not very many cards that you pay off on a regular basis. All right? Second best way to keep your credit good is 
never, ever skip a payment. You might owe $8,000 on your credit card. You might feel you'll never pay it off. But if you pay the minimum every month, which is usually 5%, so that would be $400 a month on it, it will take you about 80 years to pay off your credit card, but you will keep a good credit score. You are better to make a minimum payment and have tons of debt than have almost no debt but miss a payment. Because even if you have almost no debt and you miss a payment, that bothers them. The other way you can screw your credit is to continually ask for more. All right. Anybody else? All right. Preston. More credit. If you continually ask for more credit for a while and you make your payments, the companies will be like, yeah, okay, no problem. We, we like this guy. He makes his payments. But eventually they'll say, ooh, what's this guy doing? Vani. No, well, some people will tell you that, right? Um, I don't really put too much belief in that. Um, but by the same token, I would never use any of those apps. Credit Karma and all that stuff. I would never use those apps. Because that's their version of your credit rating. If you read the fine print on the commercials, when you see those commercials, it says right there, this is our score. It might not be right. Now, in Canada, there's two agencies that monitor credit. And they're both based in Montreal. One is called... Uh, Equifax and the other one is called TransUnion I think I can't remember you can write to them in on paper and get your credit rating I believe they also have uh, digital footprints and you can find it out that way right I personally have never checked ever because every time I've ever needed money I want to buy a house. You can buy a house. I want a credit card. Here's your credit card. I have good credit because I never, ever, ever, ever miss a payment on anything. Even if I, when I was a student and starving, my phone bill of $80 a month, my house phone bill, not sell, I would pay the $8 minimum. So my credit never went bad. Everybody cool? All right. Now, this is how it works. So, uh, I don't want to make a spreadsheet for this. It's a bit of a pain. But basically, this is how it works. Um, he paid $470, right? His interest charge is 14.4% per year. So it's 0.144 divided by 12, right? Right? And then that gets added to this. So if I were to punch that into my calculator, uh, 470 times... Uh, or 0.144 divided by 12 times 4. He would owe 475.64. Everybody cool? Right? I just found out what that times that, and then you add it to the 470. Your minimum payment is usually 3% or $10. So 475.64 times 3% is 1427. That's more than $10, so we'd have to pay 1427. Agreed? He doesn't pay it in full, but just pays the minimum. So he pays 1427. What do I do with this number and this number now? Subtract. So 475.64 minus 1427.4 Four, oh, 461.37. Now, since that's not paid, 
that whole thing becomes interest. And we do this again. All right. So I would do 46137. This is now 466.91. Minimum payment. $14. So he pays the $14. $452.90. Now please notice. He's paid 28 bucks, hasn't he? But how much has his principal gone down? How much has he paid off of his credit card? He thinks he's paid off 28 bucks, right? But how much has he really paid off? 470, now it's 453. How much has he really paid off? $17. He's paid 28 but he's only made $17 progress. Does everybody see? Is his credit in okay shape? Yes, because he's making his minimum payments. Is he going to pay this off? Eventually. Forever. Credit card companies in Canada now are forced to show you on your bill how long it will take you to pay it off if you pay it your minimum balance. All right? And it takes ages. Why? Because the credit companies know that if there are a billion credit cards out there and everybody owes a couple of dollars interest every month, that's a couple of billion dollars they're getting. They don't care about Preston Cook. They care about every Canadian who is leaving a few cents of interest on the table every day. Because that adds up, as you can see from when we were investing of $200 a month, adds up to $500,000. Does everybody see? If I were to do this on an actual spreadsheet, only 470 bucks paying off the minimum, I can't remember how long it takes, but it's something like Five years if you only pay the minimum on an amount that small. Okay? Does everybody understand? Um, so let's try one of these. Just one. Jacqueline's washing machine, blah, 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 blah. She finds this washing machine plus taxes. Or she can pay this. All right? So, if she just buys it outright, she pays 889.45 plus taxes, right? So, we multiply that by 1.12. Because the 889.45 times 1 covers the price. And then times the 0.12 covers the taxes. So how much would she pay? Everybody good? Easy peasy, right? In reality, that is how she should buy everything. Always buy what you can afford right away, if you can. Now, can you go without a washing machine? You can. There's laundromats, blah, blah, blah. But laundromats cost money. They cost time to get there. You've got to touch other people's underwear when you move it out of the dryer so you can dry your stuff. Other people have to touch your underwear. Laundromats, people are kind of grossed out by. I don't really care myself, but other people do. So, she probably doesn't have a thousand bucks in her pocket. I know I don't. Right? I couldn't wake up tomorrow and have one of you say, I need a thousand bucks right now. I'd be like, eh. 
I'd have to find it. I couldn't just whip out my wallet and make it rain, right? I couldn't do it. Neither can she. So let's look at the installment plan. On the installment plan, what does she pay? She pays one fifty plus how much? Just read the question. 90 times what? 12. So how much does she pay? Twelve thirty. In your opinion, what should she do? She can afford it. She'd do the first one, right? If she's really smart, she stops going out to the movies, stops going to dinner, stops doing everything extra, does this, and then... If she could afford $90 a month payments, she should put that into an RRSP or something, shouldn't she? Right? If she's really smart. Let's talk about a credit card. She could purchase it on her Visa card, which charges that much interest per annum compounded daily. If she paid the exact same way as before, will the machine be paid off? So she needs to borrow how much? How much money is Visa giving the store? Give her nine ninety six, whatever it was, right? Nine ninety six eighteen. That's what she's going to put on her credit card, yeah. First month, is there any interest? No. So she pays the 150. Well, I lie. She paid 150 down, right? So she didn't have to borrow 996.89 or 18. What'd she really borrow? She actually borrowed 846.18, right? Is there any interest on it the first month? No, they're nice about that, right? So she pays $90, yes? Which means she's left owing how much? She's left owing seven fifty six eighteen. Does everybody agree? Did she pay off her credit card? No. So is there going to be interest on here? How much? but it's compounded daily, right? So it's 0.19999 divided by what? 365 times how many days? 30, right? And that becomes her new balance. Everyone agree? And then she pays 90. So we subtract it out. And then she pays interest on that. And that, and that, and that, and that. Everybody cool? So keep going. How much did she need to borrow? We worked it out. It was eight forty six eighteen. Yes, that's her principal, right? Times what? One plus what was her interest rate? Point one nine 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 over what? Three sixty five, right? Everyone agree? How many years? One year. 
times how many compounding periods? She compounds every, she makes payment every month, right? Right? So what's it going to be here? 12. What did you have to pay? Wait, it's not, oh wait, I think I screwed up. Keep working, keep working. There it is. Should this be 12? Should that be 12? It's T to the N. What's the T? How many years? One. What's the N? How many compounding periods? So what should this be? 365. What does she pay in total? On the credit card. One thousand thirty three forty plus how much did she pay at the very beginning? What'd she pay at the very beginning? One fifty. So eleven fifty three forty seven. Everybody understand? And then she just has to make a choice. Whatever she wants to do. Right? Now let me give you some advice here. This is cheaper, yes? Right? Than the installment plan, yeah? Right? If she does this, that helps her credit out. If she does this, but it could also hurt her if she doesn't make a payment, right? Some stores do their own financing and they don't report to credit agencies unless you screw up. So this might not be helping her, but it also might not hurt her. This could help her, but could hurt her. Everybody understand? There's lots of variables in deciding how you're going to pay for stuff. Um, now, look at this last one. This is what I was talking about, right? She suffers. She goes to her neighbors to do laundry. She goes to her mom's. Who knows? And she takes her $150 down payment and she saves it. So it's going to be 12 months, right? Right? 4.5%. She's got a present value of 150. She's putting in $90, right? Twelve. Four point five. One fifty. She's doing it for twelve years and it was compounded monthly. Twelve. And since she's saving, it's at the beginning. So uh negative ninety, because she's paying that, right? It's going out of her pocket into the bank. At the end of 12 months, she's going to have 949.79. Could she have bought it with cash at the end of 12 months anyway? Almost. Everybody cool? All right. Now, listen up. 
This isn't on your test. Right? It's not on your final. I'm not giving you a test on it. All I want to do is open your eyes to savings, debt, and what interest, how punishing or how rewarding interest can be. All right? That's the whole point of this unit. That's all it's about, understanding that. You can start with a little, and if you keep long-term goals in mind, you'll have a lot. But it goes the other way around, right? If you borrow a lot and think long-term, you're going to pay back a lot. Everybody cool? I know we all want stuff. Everybody has this belief that, you know, I've got a good job, I should be able to get stuff. Just be careful. That's all I'm trying to say. And remember, that car you buy might last five years, maybe 10. You have to last till you're 85. Average lifespan in Canada. Everybody cool? Okay? That's the whole point of the whole unit. You've seen what happens to the numbers when you apply interest to them, both good and bad. Right? We've talked about mortgages, changing the values. Do you take a longer risk? You've heard plenty, right? Is it enough? No. Educate yourselves before you make these decisions. When you go off to college or university and that, and for some reason, they're very smart. It's always very good looking, fun loving looking people that come to you and say, hey, you want a credit card? Don't be fooled. It's not worth the t-shirt. If it is worth the t-shirt, use it judiciously. Meaning, don't buy anything with it for a while that you can't afford normally or really use it for emergencies. Is your friends going to Mexico for spring break an emergency? No. But if your friends are talking about going to spring break in Mexico, start saving in September. Okay? Just be smart. And we're done. That's the course. Tomorrow is nothing for you people with me because you're block B. I will not see you again until Friday. Unless you choose to. I'm here tomorrow afternoon. All afternoon. If you need to do something, like you didn't write the unit three test and you didn't write the second cumulative, maybe you come in then. Everybody understand? There is no cumulative on trig, but due to the fact that a great many of you, a great many of you, and you're going to take this the wrong way, but I don't really care. 